for them appointed for today to hear your cases. The special magistrate is empowered under the Florida statutes and the North Miami City Code to hold code enforcement hearings. The purpose of this hearing is to determine if a code violation exists at your property as observed and cited by a code enforcement officer of the city of North Miami. If the city is not able to prove its case, then I will dismiss it and you may leave. These proceedings are being recorded, so all persons who are speaking should do so one at a time to ensure that all testimony is clearly audible on the recording device. If folks talk over each other, the uh, record will not be clear. If English is not your primary language, then please inform me when I call your case. We have interpreters who will assist you during the proceedings. When your case is called, the property owner, agent for the property owner, or and any witness that you may have should come forward to the podium on the left side of the room and when asked, please speak directly into the microphone and say out loud your name, your business, your mailing address, and your relationship to the property. If you are not the property owner or an attorney representing the property owner, then you must present a notarized power of attorney or an affidavit uh, for your testimony to be taken on behalf of the property owner. For new cases, you will be asked for the record if you are aware and understand the violation that is being heard today. And do you understand what is required to resolve the violation? Please answer accordingly. The city will present its case first and then the property owner or violator will be given an opportunity to testify on their own behalf to bring witnesses forward, to testify, to present evidence and photographs, and also to cross-examine the city's witnesses. Following the case presentation, I will issue a finding of facts on the case. If I find that a violation of city code exists or existed on your property, then depending on the case type, I will set an abatement or compliance date for the violation to be resolved. Or for repeat violations, I will impose a daily fine amount. For new non-repeat cases, my order will also include an abatement date by which you must resolve the violation and a daily fine amount that I may impose at a future hearing date should the violation not be resolved by the abatement date. If I find good cause to postpone enforcement of the action at this time, I will table or continue the case to another hearing date in the future. If you do not agree with my findings of fact and or my ruling, then the property owner may appeal the administrative order on the case to the circuit court. An appeal must be filed within 30 days of the date of the execution of my administrative order to be appealed. In accordance with Florida law, if a person decides to appeal any decision made by the special magistrate with respect to any matter considered at these proceedings, then the person will need to have a verbatim transcript or record of the proceedings. This record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. The cost of obtaining the verbatim transcript will be the sole responsibility of the appellant. And it is recommended that persons who plan to appeal should provide their own court reporter at this proceeding. Pursuant to city code, if the city of North Miami prevails in prosecuting a case before the special magistrate, the city shall be entitled to recover all costs incurred in prosecuting the case. The current cost assessment amount is $100 per case. Once the city records an order that imposes a fine and authorizes a lien against the property, then the city will charge additional administrative fees to record and release the lien. 
If you are giving testimony today on a case, please rise and raise your right hand as the police officer or perhaps the code. You, you want me to do it? I'll do it? Okay. Um, so, so please rise, raise your right hand as I administer the oath. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give in these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say out loud, I do. Thank you. Please be seated. Um, now I will do the oath for the translators. Um, we have them both. Do you solemnly swear that or affirm that the translations which you're about to give in these proceedings will be accurate and correct to the best of your knowledge, skill, and ability, and if so, say I do. At this moment, uh, we will uh, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, the code compliance manager will announce any corrections, additions, or deletions to the hearing agenda, and after that, we will call the first case. CEZPU 2019-00042, complied. CEGMP 2019-00051, postponed. CEWWC 2019-00068, postponed. CESSP 2019 00049 postponed. FYBRR 2018 0003 postponed. Those are all the amendments to the agenda. Okay, let's proceed with the first case then. Jose Aleman. Case number MHVIO 2019-00002, Officer Gary Beswick. Can you uh, give me the property address, please? 11-2381 Bayview Lane. Again? 2381 Bayview Lane. Okay. City, please proceed. Good morning, Gary Bresick for the City of North Miami. Um, they apply for the permit, but it hasn't been obtained as yet. Could you give me the status? Good morning, Juan Carlos Sanchez on behalf of the owner, Jose Iglesias. The permit was filed uh, two weeks ago. Um, we have a, there's a case number and as of Monday late afternoon, the status that we have is that it's pending review through, I guess, some of the departments. Um, I have copies of the receipt of the filing of the permit and an additional copy of the files that were provided, which are the uh, survey, the sketch of the pergola, and the uh, calculations from an engineer that was hired after the last hearing a couple of months ago. Did the engineer give you a time frame? No, the files are already here. I know it's here, but do you, I know it's here. I looked at it. I checked it this morning, but how much time is he asking for? Uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't think he needs any more time. It's just. Um, I, I request we take a bit for 30 days because they, they do need time because it's it's just going through the process. It's not issue. Okay, um, I remember. Um, seeing the photograph of uh, you're calling it a pergola is that what it's called 
It's like a metal. Uh, yeah, sort of it's uh, it's a pretty significant structure that was put on the roof. Correct. Without a permit. Correct. Correct. So, um, is the uh, city? Is there any uh, life safety issue no. associated with this structure? Does it well, otherwise comply with well, no, city it's not, code? It's not comply. They apply for the permit. So right. I I can state that if there's a so the life safety issue, it's on the top of the roof. So basically, he said, engineer, i provide a calculation. Right. So basically, it's just for us to go and review the documentation okay. that was provided. So based on the recommendation of the code compliance officer and council's representation that the process is on its way and that permits are um, being applied for and uh, hopefully uh, expedited, uh, I'm going to table the case for 30 days. Thank you. Thank you. Next case. A beep, Tedla. The next case, table for 30 days as well. Which one is that? Which, which case are you tabling? Number two. They're not in order. Uh, that last case was in the middle of page three. Well, I was, I was looking at this. Okay, got it. Okay. Got it. Okay. So, um, is that Abib M. Tedla? Yes, table for 30 days. Okay, table, um, granted. Seven seven zero Condominium Association. Case number FYBRR 2018-0076, Officer Gary Beswick. Good morning. One My second, Susan please. Mushkani from 770 Northeast 128th Street. And the state of your name for the record? Hassan Mushkani. I have an apartment in the building, and there is other two gentlemen, they have the same way. Have one apartment. And uh, city, would you proceed? Good morning, Gary Basic for the city of North Miami. This property was cited for a 40 year recertification, and as of today, we still haven't received any. I do have the paperwork. We are working on it. We hire an engineering firm, they are working right now, and um, so they are in process right now. If you want to take a look there. All the processes, okay. once, the, once the engineer have done the inspection, they need to submit a report um, to the city with the upper fee, which is $707. Until then, the violation still exists. And we need an adjudication. Yeah, um, from reviewing the record, this was tabled Correct. Uh, back in June. Um, and so here we are in September. Yes. We so what, what efforts have you made to uh, recertify the building or certify the building? Yeah. You know, first of all, we don't have no management company, no association in the building. We are, as a, you know, as owner, a couple of them, we are just working very hard to be able to how many How many unit owners do you have? Just one. Only and one he unit? He has one. He has one. So that's it? So that's it. The others, they, they didn't show up. So, which is no, how many how many unit owners? Fifteen total. Fifteen, 15, 15 total. apartments. Total. Do you understand that according to the <laughs> Secretary of State's office, your cor your condominium association corporation has been dissolved? Yes, actually, that's why we 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 negotiate with the management company right now. Today, we have a meeting in the building, and hopefully, we can reach to that point to hire the management. Company. Because if you have a corporation that's dissolved, you really have no business standing there representing the corporation. The corporation right. doesn't exist. Right. So somebody has to take the bull by the horns and move this along and get certified. Who's going to do that? Uh, as I said today, hopefully, you know, we reach that point and hopefully the management company, which is, uh, is uh, we uh, hire that company and take care of the, all this. Well, you can't really, you can't just shift it over to the management association. You have to do that yourselves. It's your responsibility, the unit owner's responsibility to do that. And so um, I'm going to... Um, 
approve the um, recommendation made by um, this has not been previously adjudicated, correct? No. Okay. So, um, based on the unrebutted or the testimony of the city um, code compliance officer and the evidence presented, noting that the violation for failing to get certified has not been corrected and still exists, proper notice having been given, uh, members of the association, which is dissolved currently, are here. I find in favor of the city enter an adjudication and set a compliance date of 30 days. In the event of non-compliance, there will be a daily fine of $250 until the violation is abated. Thank you. So you gotta get moving. Thank you. Mm -hmm. like and you gotta get the corporation um, recertified or yeah. uh, reinstated. Otherwise, I'm not gonna let anybody from the association speak the next time. Yeah. You is need to have the association reactivate uh, the corporation to have the authority to stand there and make um, uh, statements and comments, okay? Of course, for the timing, is it possible to get the 60 days to make sure the corporation- You come back in 30 days, you come back in 30 days, and then we'll see where you are, okay? okay? Thank you. If you're making good progress, sure. we may give you a little bit more time, but right now I want you moving to get everything legalized. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Albert and Beverly Rossman, case number CEPOD 2019 0007. <laughs> Officer Shanna Sanders. This is, uh, and, and your name, please? Debbie Rossman. Debbie Rossman? Yeah, my pa the, the names are deceased. Okay. So you, you have the authority yes. to, you, you have the authority to speak on behalf of your, the property owner. You yes. are, are you the property owner? I'm you the are daughter the, of the parent, and okay. I believe it's already been transferred. Uh, okay, good. So from what I'm seeing, uh, there's a storage pot in, yes. in the property. Yes. And um, do you need to move it? You, yes. How, how much time do you need? Um, I actually, because of the hearing, I try to do it. I try to schedule it before the hearing. So, but um, with the hurricane, I guess they're backed up. But they gave me an appointment. I have the, the paper here for Friday, and over the next couple of days, I'm going to empty out the rest of the. Okay, pond. is 30 days okay with the city? Sure, that's fine. Okay. Anything else uh, from the city? I assume you want to put the photograph in evidence, correct? Um, well, no, you don't need, necessarily need to. If you're going to give her um, 30 days, she's saying it's going to be removed yes. by Friday. Um, no, we don't necessarily need to show all of that. Okay. So but if you want to see it, that's up to you. So I'll, I'll table it for 30 days. I'm, I'm not going to enter an adjudication. I'm, I'm giving you 30 days Perfect. to... Um, I appreciate it. To um, remove the, the stuff the, out of it. Yes, yes. Or, or in some cases, I think you can get a permit from the city. The problem with the permit, I think, I don't know if she knows, we had gone to, because we figured that would be the easiest thing to do is get a permit. And when we went down there, they said that you have to be like 10 feet off of the, the street. And I don't believe, and th our property supposedly doesn't start at the street. It's like 10 feet in. So there's really not enough space to put uh, it on. doesn't matter. You're going to remove it. So um, we're, exactly, we're good. Exactly. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Next case. Shine Investments LLC, case number C R sorry R C C O R, twenty eighteen zero 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 twenty three, Officer Gary Beswick. Good morning. Good morning. Reoccupancy certificate issue. Please state your full name, address, and relationship to the property, please. Sheila Mezei and I'm the manager of the corporation Shiny Investments and I have um, I, I can speak in behalf of the owner. What is, is spell your last name? M-E-Z-E-I. M-E-Z-E-I? Yes. Okay and you can speak on behalf of the owner because you are? I'm the manager. You're the manager. Okay. Do um, you understand the violation uh, filed against you? Yes, uh, when I purchased the property, I did not get a reoccupancy certificate. I wasn't, um, I was misinformed, uh, and therefore um, I spoke with the city, 
and I, I'm trying to sell um, the property and the property will be sold with the contingency that the new owners or the buyer will um, take care of the violation. I have been given um, one year. I mean, they, they are going to be given one year to do it with a $5,000 uh, uh, in escrow and the buyers are agreeing. I actually have a contract right now, but uh, we're, we need a couple more days to finalize it. Okay, City, what's your position? Well, basically, um, I'm familiar with what you're talking about. Um, the, the buyer that she had before that deal fell through, a gentleman came in and said he's going to be the new buyer, so we're still waiting on that documentation. If he agrees to take the terms of the agreement, then we have no problem to go ahead and pass it on to him. So we can table it for 30 days and see if that deal goes through, what she's talking to. Okay. About. Uh, I'll accept the recommendation of the city code enforcement officer and table the case for 30 days. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Ryan Kretz, case number MHVIO 2019-00334, Officer Gary Beswick. Please state your full name, address, and relationship to the property. Bruce Arthur, WHA Design, 9868, 9867 Southwest 184th Street, Palmetto Bay, Florida. Uh, I'm the agent for the owner of the property. Uh, agent meaning a manager, a realtor, what, what kind Architectural of agency? Architectural firm. We're the architects. And for, for Mr. Kratz, he retained us to... Uh, prepare a set of documents to correct the violation and to represent him okay, here so this morning. You, you and we have an authorization. You're, you're a licensed architect. Yes, sir. We are. Okay. Your last name again? Arthur. A R T H U R. Okay. Uh, city, please proceed. By the way, who, who is here with you? Marta Herrera. She's my partner. W H A Design. Okay. City, you may proceed. Good morning, Gary Bezik, City of North Miami. At, at this point, we're just seeking adjudication and with abatement date. So let me understand there's work that has been done on the property without a permit. Yes, sir. Okay, you, you concede that. Yes, sir. Okay. You understand that um, you need to apply for permits and meet all of the um, requirements of the code? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Special Magistrate, we actually have a set of construction documents to address the concrete apron out of the garage, and I believe it was two lights that were installed without, a, without the permit, two okay. exterior sconce lights. Okay. How much time do you need? I, I guess it's really up to your municipality, but I, if we had 60 days, I think that would be more than enough. Okay. We'll That's do that. fine. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Based on the uh, testimony of the city's code compliance officer, uh, the photographs and the evidence presented depicting uh, that the cited violations still exist, uh, the property owner through its representatives having agreed, um, I find in favor of the city entering adjudication and set an abatement date of 60 days. In the event of non-compliance, there will be a daily fine of $250 until the violation is abated. Thank you. Thank you, Special Magistrate. 60 days. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Thirteen zero five five Northeast 6th Avenue. Name hey. of the case? That's the name of the case. Okay. The case number is MHVIO 2019-00292. The officer is John Dorville. Anybody uh, present on behalf of the property owner? Uh, 13, oh, is it 1305 five Northeast 6th Avenue? Okay, anybody here on behalf of the property owner? If not, let me hear from the city. 
Good morning, John Drover, the City of North Miami Code Compliance Office. This property, 13055 Northeast 6th Avenue, was cited for a damaged um, electrical fence. Uh, this actual violation was brought to my attention by a resident. I cited them for repairing the electrical fence. Um, it's basically an amenity that has been removed and has not been repaired. The property was the affidavit of service was provided on 8-26-19 at 12-24 p.m. And basically it's just their electrical fence. That's uh chain has been, and I'll show you a picture to enter it in the right. I've seen the picture. You've seen it? Yes. Is, is it still there or has that fence been removed? The fence has not been removed. The, the, the actual... Mechanism. mechanism is still there that's correct does that represent a threat to public safety it does not it is I, it's a code violation based on the fact that it's in a rem removed amenity okay but it doesn't open and close it does at not the moment. stay solely open okay you're um, recommending a uh, an adjudication I am recommending an adjudication I'm um, obviously the property owner has been I've actually spoken to the property owner um, and their position, I don't want to state their position for them. However, they've been aware, made aware of this particular issue for some time, and it has, to the date, it has not been resolved. So it's just a question of having it adjudicated. And yeah, is, is it a multifamily uh, property? And this is a multifamily property, correct. Okay. And so you would be citing the association? Well, this is actually an apartment complex. Oh, so there's an owner. There's an That's actually okay. a sole owner. All right. Um, Prestige Estates. Okay, because it's it's listed just as a, an address. There's no corporation on the uh, customer. Mm -hmm. That's the property owner. So the case number, property address, and then the prop the actual property owner is um. It's basically listed as their address, but it's Co Prestige Estates. Okay. All right. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer, the photograph and evidence presented depicting that the cited violation still exists, proper notice has been given. I find in favor of the city enter an adjudication and set a compliance date of 30 days. In the event of noncompliance, there will be a daily fine of $250 until the violation is abated. Thank Next. you. Three AS Development LLC, case number RCCOR 2018-00028, Officer is Gary Beswick. Anybody on beha here on behalf of the property owner, Three AS Development LLC, property address 1255 Northwest 136. Hi. Uh, good morning. State your name, please. Uh, Jainer Valverde. What, the, is, what is your relationship to the property? I'm the manager of the corporation that owns the house. Okay. It's a house? Yeah. Who's Annabelle Garcia Croes? That's the owner of the corporation that owns the house. And you are not the owner, you are no, what? I am one of the managers for the corporation. Okay, do you have authority to speak on yes. behalf of the corporation? Yes. Are you an officer of the corporation? No, I'm not an officer of the corporation. Okay, uh, why is not the owner of the corporation not here i'm representing them uh they travel a lot i was here 30 days ago just to ask for an extension that's really what i'm asking for right now because the paperwork is at the city um, i was there this morning to try to meet with the chief uh, and they still have it so i had to leave the building department and come here to do this and i'm coming right back um, i'm thinking that maybe in the next 30 days it will be resolved but uh, I thought 30 days last time was going to be enough. And you can tear it, Your Honor, for 30 you, days. You want me to take, because this, this was supposed to be abated by August 14th, and Correct. it hasn't. There's an adjudication already in place. I'm going to table it for yeah, 30 well, because days. Yeah, the, uh, the permit is, is, is in our office going through, so you have to wait. And you cannot get a react until they pass final inspection anyhow. So. Okay, so uh, this is a reoccupancy certificate that he's looking for. Come he on. needs 30 days to get it. To, for the permit to be issued and get the past inspections. Okay, I'm going to table it for 30 days. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Next case. This next case has three cases. 
It's AGS and Associate Inc. First case number is MHVIO 2019-00264. We'll hear that case first. Officer is John Dor Dorville. Anybody on behalf of the uh, property owner? Property address is 14399 Northeast 5th Place. And these all involve uh, Unit 4. City? Uh, John Dorville, City, North Miami Code Compliance Office. Yes, uh, Your Master, this off, this, I have, these violations are associated to one apartment, apartment number four. There are various issues pertaining to, looks like there was some sort of, you know, obviously this person's been a long-standing resident within this unit, but there's some unaddressed issues by the property owner. Um, once again, it's a question of amenities. There are no life safety issues here. The first one referencing MHVIO 2019-00264 is um, missing cabinet, kitchen cabinet doors. This property was, all three of these violations were, affidavit of service were served on 8-26-19 at 11.58 a.m. How did you become aware, how did you become aware of the violation? This is also a resident complaint. Okay. So... One second, as I get back to the photos, I'm sure you can see it, but I just want to enter them in evidence. And these photos are quite interesting, as we'll see. So as entered in the system, the, the, some of the pictures get off skewed, but obviously a missing cabinet door. Um, so that's that one issue. All right, we're just dealing with the first one, which is the, the missing kitchen. Missing cabinet door, yeah. So right. the condition right. of the cabinet doors, once again, it's an issue. Obviously, when a resident call, um, contacts the city, um, we make reference to what the issues are. We address it with the property owner. The property owner was made aware of the issue. Obviously, the property has been cited until date. Nothing has been done. Okay. So, um, any issue about entry into the premises? Were you allowed in, or how, how did you? Manage? I gained entrance through co my contact with the actual resident of the uh, of the unit. Okay. All right. As to that one particular violation, based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's uh, code compliance officer, the photograph and evidence presented depicting that the cited violation still exists. I find in favor of the city enter an adjudication and set an abatement date of 30 days. In the event of noncompliance, there will be a daily fine of $250 until the violation is abated. Let's move on to the next one. MHVIO 2019-0064. Um, obviously, the affidavit of service uh, the same time as previously stated. I'll go back directly. This issue is where we're paying, um, I'm sorry. It's 00265 is the next one. Affidavit of service as stated, and this is for the kitchen ceiling. Do you know? Obviously, we requested for them to paint the kitchen ceiling for some smoke. Looks like some smoke damage in terms of the coloration of the of the uh, of the wall. Okay, I saw a picture of a stove. That's not the That's case not we're on right now. I saw the picture of the uh, ceiling, okay. so you don't need to find that I'm f I'm aware of it. Right. So just some black soot on the on the on the paint. Once again, requested of the property owner. Property owner was made aware, um, as per the unit resident. They basically said they've been having this issue, and they just asked simply for it to be painted. Obviously, it's a code violation. And um, we cited them once we in contact with the property owner and no movement. Okay, so uh, is this a situation where the tenant is complaining about the landlord not 
uh, maintaining the property uh, correctly? That is correct. That's how you gain entry through yes. the tenant? Yes, sir. Okay, I understand. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's co-compliance co officer, the photographs and evidence presented depicting that the cited violations still exist and that proper notice has been given, I find in favor of the city entering adjudication and set a compliance date of 30 days. In the event of non-compliance, there shall be a daily fine of $250 until the violation is abated. And lastly, and um, lastly, MHVIO 2019-00266. This is obviously to replace the stove, and we saw a picture of the stove as an example. I saw the stove. No response from the property owner. Is that a life safety issue? That, that is not a life safety issue. There's obviously, I mean, the stove is in a certain amount of disrepair. There are some burners that are not working, and so... Typically, in an issue such as this, we ask the property owner to either fix or repair, and neither has been done. Okay. You, you've you been in contact with the property owner, correct? I have, sir, yes. Okay. Is there any reluctance or, um, you know, what what's the owner's there's, position? There's some issues going on in this property in general in terms of the ownership. I mean, it's a little too much to detail at this particular moment. However, there's been some several issues with this property in reference to... The actual, it's a, obviously the property owner took over for someone else, and they're in the process of either evicting or trying to get rid of other people in the unit. And this is my, not my assumption, this is my uh, take on it based on what I've been told. And um, they're just refusing to do certain types of work on the property. The uh, owner is a local resident, or? They live in the state of Florida, they live in okay. South Florida, yes. And so they're aware of the situation? Yes, they are, sir. Okay. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer, the photographs and evidence presented, depicting that decided violations still exist, proper notice has been given, I find in favor of the city entering adjudication and set a compliance date of 30 days. In the event of noncompliance, it shall be a daily fine of $250 until the violation is abated. Thank you. You're welcome. Alejandro de la Cruz, case number MHVIO 2018-01230, Officer Gary Beswick. Anyone present on behalf of the property owner? Seeing nobody, I'm going to ask the city to present. Good morning, Gary Beswick for the city of North Miami. The, the permit was approved yesterday, so I'm going to go ahead and table it for 30 days, give them time to pay for it and so they can apply for the REAC as well. It's two cases, so basically we're gonna table both of them for 30 both, days. Both of them? Yes. Now, I, I noticed that the first one, 01230, was previously adjudicated with an abatement date of August 14th. Can, yeah. can you check your records and see if that's not the case? Yeah, but I also found that the, um, the first one was also adjudicated. I could be wrong, but the progress report shows that there was a prior adjudication on that one as well. Yes, it was, but as I said, the permit was, up, was approved on the 16th, so so then they, they was notified that it's approved. The gentleman was here, I told him he can go next door and pay for it. Great, so you want me to uh, table, table it? both of them, yes. Table both cases, yeah. uh, and let's read for the record the next one, and I'll table that as well. Okay. Alejandro de la Cruz, case number RCCOR 2018-00025, Officer Gary Beswick. Okay, same, uh, same. issue. Um, you're seeking an, uh, Thir uh, 30 days because 30 day. they can't get that without the permit being issued and inspection taking okay. place. Okay, so tabled for 30 days yes. as well. Thank you. Brotherton Investments, LLC. Case number CEWRA 2019-00015, Officer Shanna Sanders. Welcome and good morning, Ms. Sanders. Good morning. Please state your name for the Shanna record. San Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, Coal Compliance okay. Officer. Okay, nobody uh, present on behalf of the property owner. Um, address numbers are missing. Okay, tell me about that. 
Yes, this is a new case for property address 1935 Keystone Boulevard that was originally opened June 12th of 2019. I've sent a couple of letters I'm showing here, July 1st, July 16th, as of last Wednesday, actually last Tuesday, address numbers still remain missing from the rear of the property. I haven't had any contact with anyone at the property. Um, I understand it's a rental property, but again, I haven't had any contact with anyone, but as of last Tuesday, address numbers still remain missing. This is a single family home? Yes, it is. Keystone Point? Um, yes, Keystone. Okay. Keystone Boulevard to be exact. Okay, but no, nobody has contacted you about this? No, no one has contacted me, okay. but it is um, an occupied um, structure. Okay. All right, uh, and uh, so um, it's 30 days to comply uh, okay with you? Um, 30 days is, um, 30 days suffice, yes. I, okay. I want to make sure I put on record, proper service was given, um, property was posted on August 29th of this year. But yes, 30 days is fine. Yeah, it's very easy to just put up a number, so that's not a problem. Based on the uh, unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer um, and the uh, evidence presented, depicting that the violations still exist and that proper notice has been given, I find in favor of the city enter an adjudication and set a compliance date of 30 days. In the event of noncompliance, there shall be a daily fine of $250 until the violation is abated. There's nothing more annoying than driving around a neighborhood trying to find an address and not seeing a, uh, a number where you, you know, to find where you're going. It's, uh, especially in case of an emergency. If, um, God forbid, fire rescue police need to respond and they can't find an address, of that's, course. That's, not, that's not cool. Of course. Okay, next. Sheena M. Scott. Case number is CEIVY 2019-00127, Officer Jose Perez. Anybody here on behalf of the property owner? Kristen or Augustine and wife Ann, 12233 Northwest 7th Avenue. Sir, uh, tell me your name and address and your relationship to the property. My name is Anthony Scott. Speak into the mic, please. My name is Anthony Scott. Um, I live at 245 Northeast 124th Street. Sheena Scott is my grandmother, but she couldn't come because she had to go to the Bahamas to help out some family members that were affected by the hurricane. What's, what's your last name? Can you please? Scott. Okay. And you uh, are the grandson? Yes, of sir. the property owner, and the yes, property owner is uh, attending to more serious matters. Um, yes, sir. Okay. Um, let me hear from the city. City of North Miami Code Enforcement Officer Perez. Today we're hearing the case in reference to the property at 245 Northeast 124th Street. This violation is regarding to a crash vehicle that's being stored in front of the property. Um, the vehicle is in derelict condition and per city code needs to be removed or covered with a weather fitting car cover. That's not very difficult to do. Why, why can't you remove the vehicle or uh, put the cover over it? What, what's um, the problem there? Honestly, I didn't know it, that I was supposed to cover it or anything like that, you know. I had an accident like a Is like that your car? Ago. Yes, sir. Okay, well, it, you were here before or your your grandmother was here before and you were given time to correct the violation and you know here we are car is still there i don't think that was that wasn't about excuse the me th this is the first hearing for this specific case okay i thought that it was um we've heard others for this but no this one specifically is the first time um this is the case ending zero 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 fifty seven one two seven i'm sorry i'm on the next case okay gotcha crashed vehicle uh okay all right i'm sorry uh any recommendation from the city uh you want to table it for 30 days we could table it for 30 days given the circumstances okay 
all right, in the meantime, so that we don't have to come back, can you start looking at ways of either removing the vehicle or covering so that it doesn't show the way that it is depicted on the photographs? Uh, yes, sir. I would. Um, I was planning on moving it probably in like a week or two, but I'll cover it until I get to move it. Okay. You could get a, a car cover from Walmart or AutoZone, one of the $20 ones, and cover it until you're able to move it, and that could close out the violation itself. All right, then I'll, I guess I'll do that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank oh, you very much. Okay. Have a good day. All right. Clear Investment Holdings, LLC. Case number RCCOR 2018-00026, Officer Gary Beswick. Anybody here on behalf of the property owner? Clear Investment Holdings, LLC. If not, let me hear from the city. Mr. Beswick. Good morning, Gary Beswick for the city of North Miami. As of this morning, there's no complaints. And this was previously adjudicated? Yes. Okay. Have you made contact with the property owner? No, I haven't, sp I haven't seen or spoke to them from the last year. Okay. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer and the evidence presented that the property has been out of compliance, um, I hereby ratify the fines and uh, fines accrued to date in whatever the amount and assess costs in favor of the city. The fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there's compliance. Thank you. Okay, next case. Eric Vasquez. Case number MHM, sorry, MHVIO 2018-01331. Officer Gary Beswick. Please state your full name, sir. Sure, Eric Vasquez, 1235 Northwest 124th Street. Are you the owner? Yes, sir. Okay, this matter has been tabled twice. Uh, there's a concrete uh, installation. Are there photographs that the city has that would like uh, to, to share with me? Uh, city, where uh, are we regarding the um, setback have, violations? Well, I'll photograph, but it, the case was heard before we start using this, so it's not attached to this. But what will happen is they, 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 are, they get a permit to install um, concrete. Then after the inspection was done, then they went and expanded on what the permit was for, and they went in the setback. Um, basically, the last time he said he was going to take care of it, he haven't, he haven't done so yet. But basically, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Wait, let, him, let him finish, please. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, so basically, if he get, I don't know if he went to zoning, or they give him a variance for it, or what, I'm not sure. So that he can talk in that regards. About the how much? Setback. How much into the uh, setback has he encroached? Uh, he's all, almost to the fence of, on the side. Okay, so so there is no setback. Not at this point, no. It's gone. He's gone all the way to the boundary. Correct. Okay, sir. Um, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. The concrete has been removed. The concrete has been. Have you advised the code enforcement officer that it's been removed or? Um, if not, why not? No, since he's coming by every day, I thought he wouldn't see it, but the concrete has been removed. Can you show him a, a whole picture? Way. Yeah. Um, um, you can I, tape it, it third days and I go about there. Yeah, they're, they're, it's almost virtually impossible to get a variance to remove, to, to encroach into a, a setback at that, that far. So uh, naturally, his only recourse would have been to remove the concrete. So yes. I'm going to table it for 30 okay. days to allow the officer to go out there and make sure that there's no uh, further encroachment into your neighbor's uh, yard. Okay. Okay. Thank you. George Dotzler, case number MHVIO 2018-01257, Officer Gary Beswick. 
Good morning, Gary Basic for the city of North Miami. If, if you recall, this case, um, Your Honor, is the one that the, the gentleman, he provided um, some photograph, basically, and I think he described himself that he was an engineer. Yes. Well, as of today, there is no permits on file. However, I have a printout. I have a printout from our system. You can um, for you to look to show that they haven't applied or obtained a permit. Uh, yes, as I recall the case, uh, there was an issue as to whether or not the work that was done on the dock uh, required a permit, and the building official stated that it did require a permit, and yeah. and that was my finding. And there was an abatement date of September eleventh, uh, I believe. Correct. Yes. Okay. So dealing only with the first case, because there's two of them. Um, the document that you are showing me reflects what. The document I'm showing you, it reflects the, the history and the property of every single thing that opened or closed on a property. And as of this morning, there is no permit being applied for, for the dock. Okay. All right. And the property owner is not present. So based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer, the evidence presented uh, that the property is and has been out of compliance since uh, September 11th, which was the abatement date. I, fear, I hereby find in favor of the city, ratify the fines accrued to date, and assess costs in favor of the city. The fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there is compliance. And I also authorize the uh, filing of a lien against the property. The next case involves the same property owner. Yes, the same property, basically, and this one, is, uh, this one is for unsafe structure, basically, and they still haven't. As the records you just view, it shows that no permit has been applied for or obtained. And um, so, other than the fines that will accrue, um, this would also authorize the building official to go out there and either remove it or ask the Board of Rules and Appeals of the county to authorize the removal of the unsafe structure. That's correct. Correct? So I'm going to do both. Okay. Based on the testimony of the city's code compliance officer, the photographs uh, previously presented uh, that I reviewed prior to this hearing, um, and uh, depicting that the property is still out of compliance uh, since at least September 11th, which was the abatement date, I find in favor of the city, ratify the fines accrued to date, um, and authorize the um, filing of a lien and whatever action is necessary by the building official to pursue any uh, unsafe structure uh, proceeding uh, before the County Board of Rules and Appeals. Uh, the fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there is compliance. Thank you. You're welcome. Jean Josue, case number CEEXP 2019-00141, officers at me, St. Louis. Ms. St. Louis, uh, welcome, come on up. Anybody here on behalf of the property owner? 1140 Northeast 131st, if not, the city may proceed. Good morning, court officer at me, St. Louis. Um, this violation was opened back June 27th. As of today, they are not in compliance. I have pictures. Um, can you see the pictures? Yes. This is the initial pictures. Um, I had to take them through the gate because the gate wasn't open. But and the pictures reflect that the exterior of the property needs painting. Yes. Okay. And our camera, for some reason, makes it look a little bit better than 
Yeah, but you saw with your own eyes that it requires a paint job. Yes. Have you, have you made contact with the owner? They left me a voicemail yesterday, and I returned a phone call this morning. Apparently, the owner of the property is going to dialysis treat treatment, but I did keep the son's phone number. I told him, you know, I will go ahead and let the case be heard. So that way he can then go ahead and try to find ways to bring the, co the property into compliance. So I'm guessing it was just more so of a language barrier as to why the father didn't contact me before. What is your recommendation? Um, I'll go ahead and request adjudication, but give them at least six months to go ahead and take care of it. Okay, yeah. I, I, that's too much. How about it, three? Okay, I'll I'll uh, I'll be lenient, but I won't mm -hmm. be that lenient because it's just a paint job. No, I'm and if it, uh, 60 days max, yeah, sixty. I'm I'm gonna go with sixty, and That's then fine with me. if there's some urgent mm -hmm. reason, some extraordinary reason why they need more time, they can come back and ask me. Perfect. But the um, I'm gonna set an abatement date of the, of uh, sixty days. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer, the photographs and the evidence presented, depicting that the cited violation still exists, proper notice has been given, I find in favor of the city, enter an adjudication and set a, an abatement date of 60 days. In the event of non-compliance, there shall be a daily fine of $250 until the violation is abated. Long Island Apartments, LLC, case number is MHZCU 2019-00001, Officer Gary Bess. Anybody here on behalf of the property owner? If not, let me hear from the city. Good morning, Gary Bezik for the city of North Miami. The, prop the property owner applied for the CU, for the ZC um, certificate of use permit on Monday, so we we'll have to wait on the process for zoning to do their the review then pass it on for me to do my inspection so I'm, requ I'm recommending to table it for 30 days for, for it to go through the process okay this uh, has been previously adjudicated yes. uh, and there was supposed to be compliance as of june right correct okay uh, i know that certificates uh, of use take uh, a while so i will um as long as there's movement i'm going to agree to table it for yes. 30 days 30 days 30 yes. days okay will do thank you you're welcome Next. Marie Addy, case number CEBPR 2019-00034, Officer Jose Perez. Anybody on behalf of the owner um, of 55 Northwest 122nd Street, uh, please Excuse take your me. full name. Um, my name is Mary Desgrips. Um, the property owner is here, but she went to the bathroom. All right, you want to pass and come back, or do you want to wait a couple minutes? Your call. All right, let's pass and then uh, come back to you in a minute. Let's move on with the next case. All right, thank you. MB and CS Investors LLC, case number CEFAW 2019-00156, Officer Edme St. Louis. Anybody on behalf of the property owner? 1020 Northeast 128th Street, MB and CS Investors LLC. If not, let me hear from the city. Good morning, Code Officer St. Louis. This violation is in regards to a chain link fence that's falling apart. This violation was opened back July 11, 2019. As of the final recheck, still in, it's still in, it's still not in compliance. All right, pictures. and just show the, I, I, I have the pictures, I'm looking at them, but can you also, also show them to the, on, on the screen so everybody can see it? Yeah, it's on the screen. Have, have you made contact with the property owner? No one has contacted me. It's pretty egregious, uh, right, on the, right on the sidewalk there. Um, does the city allow a chain, a chain link fence uh, in the front of the property? Is that uh, allowed by the code? If it was already there, I believe they were grandfathered in. 
Yeah, if it's a new property. Okay, so can't. so are you are you requiring them to fix it or replace it? To at least fix it, for the most okay. part. Okay. All right. Um, Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer, the photographs and the evidence presented depicting that the cited violations still exist and that proper notice has been given, I find in favor of the city enter an adjudication and set a compliance date of 30 days. In the event of noncompliance, there shall be a daily fine of $500 until the violation is abated. Let's go back to the uh, prior case. I think the uh, property owner is back. Okay. And that's uh, Marie P. Adi, 55 Northwest 122nd Street. Please state your full name, address, and relationship to the property. I am Marie P. Adi. S speak I'm into the mic so we can all hear you. Okay, I'm Paulette Bernardo, I'm the property owner. Okay, and um, the young lady to your She's my niece. left is your niece. Yes. Do you, do you understand why you're here today? I don't know why. You don't know, were no. you cited? Yes, but I don't know why. Okay, so we'll let the city explain. Mr. Perez? Okay. City of North Miami, Code Enforcement Officer Perez. Today we're hearing the case in reference to the property at 55 Northwest 122nd Street. This is in regards to work that's being done inside the property without a permit. On one second, on about July 11th, approximately, uh, I was doing an inspection of the area, and I observed um, some drywall that was being moved. Um, I then made contact with the residents of the property, one of them being her niece who was here present today. Um, and I advised that the work that's being done inside the property, which they showed me inside the property, uh, needed to be permitted. They were um, doing some sort of divisions inside the property itself. I gave them a verbal warning and a uh, courtesy notice saying that they needed to get permits or uh, obtain and apply for permits, um, at which time they did not. I then issued an official notice of violation for it and gave them a reinspection date of July 19th. About July 19th, yes. And they still did not apply for the permitting. As of my final reinspection, no permit has been obtained or applied for. Who was doing the work while you were there? Uh, so a gentleman was doing the work and the niece was present at the time. I explained to them that unfortunately the work that was being done didn't need permitting um, because of the extent amount of work that was being done. And I made it clear because they were under the in in interpretation that they did not need any permits for work inside a property. Okay, w was it a contractor or? No, it, it seemed to be uh, family members just doing the work themselves. Okay. Yeah. And you observed uh, some drywall being uh, moved around and uh, you, you saw that there was some uh, work having to do with dividing a room, is that your testimony? Correct, so okay. once I saw the uh, drywall being moved, uh, I went in and made contact with the resident and they showed me inside the property what they were doing. Okay, ma'am, do you understand what the nature of the violation is now? Now I am knowing, but before I didn't know what it was. Okay. Until after, so when I received the notice of violation, so I told my family member, this, what happened? This, this, I got a violation. And then that was after my niece came to me and she told me, auntie, uh, I must tell you something that happened. Because what happened, your honor, I have a Florida womb, the TV womb. So that's why everybody watch TV. Then I do not have a womb for her to live so that's why she went for her privacy. She went and did that separation. But I did not know that was a violation to tell I, you the truth, but I didn't know about it. I, if I, I have, understand. If I've known, I would take I, care of I it. I understand that, yes. that you were totally um, unaware that, that a permit was necessary. Yeah. Uh, but the work was done, correct? Yes. All right. And so now that the work was done without a permit, you need to ask the city for a permit to get the work legalized to make sure that it complies with all the building codes. And that's why we require 
people to get permits to make sure that whatever work is done is done right. So um, how much time do you think you'll need to get the necessary paperwork and, and get a permit issued? Have you contacted a contractor, an engineer, a professional to assist you through the process? No, no, okay. How much time do you think they'll need to, to get the work legalized? Of course, you can always remove it. You can always remove the drywall and put the place back the way it was. I'm not sure that you want to do that, but that's also an option. Yeah. What is your recommendation, uh, Mr. Perez? Well, the city's recommendation would be obviously for an adjudication uh, due to the fact that the work was done without a permit. Under normal circumstances, that would have been uh, a citation, but i rather uh, inform the resident and try to be a little bit lenient because they weren't unaware um, at this point. So l let's get an adjudication and let's give them uh, 30 days to at least obtain or, or apply for the, or start the process of applying for the permit and we'll go from there. Okay, uh, let me do it this way. Ma'am, you need to get this work properly permitted. Yes. So you'll have to reach out to either a contractor or an architect or somebody to help you through the process, unless you have experience yourself in this type of work. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to be a little bit lenient to, since you were not aware and did it inadvertently and I know how difficult it is to go through the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 60 days to get the necessary paperwork filed, get a permit number and start getting all your inspections and all the work done and I want to see if in, within 60 days you're done with that process, okay? Yes. I, I know that it's going to take you a few days, maybe a couple of weeks to get somebody I don't want to rush you, but you do need to get this work legalized. Thank so, you very much. Okay, yes. so um, based on the testimony of the city's code compliance officer and the evidence presented, having uh, heard from the property owner, but being mindful that the violation does exist, that work was done without a permit, proper notice has been given, I find in favor of the city. Enter adju an adjudication and set a compliance date of 60 days. In the event of non-compliance, there shall be a daily fine of $250 until the violation is abated. So Thank you. that's uh, my ruling. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you. Mier LLP, case number FYBRR 2018-00. 062, Officer Gary Beswick. Anybody here on behalf of the property owner? One three two zero zero Northeast Seventh Avenue. There has been a prior adjudication. Um, for the record, I searched the. Uh, it's, it's abated. It's abated? Yes. The violation has been corrected? Yes. Okay, what I was going to say is that I checked with the property, uh, the uh, Secretary of State's office, and there is no such legal entity as me, Air LLP, registered with the state of Florida. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. So in any event, it, it, the correction has been made. Uh, dismiss the case? Is that yes, your recommendation? Yes, dismiss Case is dismissed. Ready Real Estate Holdings, LLC. Case number RCCOR 2018-00003, Officer Gary Beswick. Good morning, Gary Beswick for the city of North Good morning. morning. Building department, as of this morning, the property is not in compliance. What is the nature of the violation? Reoccupancy. Reoccupancy. Um, failure to obtain an approved reoccupancy prior to transfer of title. Okay. All right. Um, you want an adjudication? Uh, I think it's it, it was it was uh, already adjudicated. Need to find to move forward. This is ready real estate. Uh, ready real estate is that yes. where we're at? I don't have that uh, as an adjudication. But when was it supposed to be abated? By February. By February twenty. 27, 2019. 
Okay. All right. Uh, what was the amount of the fine? Two fifty a day. Okay. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer and the evidence presented, the property has been out of compliance since February 27th, 2019. I uh, find in favor of the city hereby ratify the fines accrued to date of $250 per day, assess costs in favor of the city. The fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there is compliance, and I authorize the filing of a lien against the property. Thank you. You're welcome. Robert A. Johnson, case number CEPFY 2019 -00199, Officer Shanna Sanders. Anybody here on behalf of the property owner? 2410 Magnolia Drive. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, Cole Compliance Officer. Um, this case has been abated. You want me to dismiss it? Yes. Case dismissed. SH005 LLC, case number CEEXP. 2019-00137, Officer Edme St. Louis. Anybody present on behalf of the property owner? 1141 Northeast 130th Street. There's, there are three cases, one, two, three cases against the same property. We're gonna start with the first one. Good morning, Court Officer St. Louis. As far as for the first case, which is the painting, as of the final recheck, Property still not in compliance, and I believe we'll move forward with the fines. Okay, it's been previously adjudicated. Compliance date was September 11th. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer and the evidence presented that the property is still out of compliance since the abatement date of September 11th, 2019, I find in favor of the city. I hereby ratify the fines accrued to date in the amount of $250 per day, assess costs in favor of the city, and uh, the fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there is compliance. I hereby authorize the filing of a lien against the property. Next case, same property. For the inoperable vehicle? Yes. As of the final recheck, the vehicle Still there. Still there. Have you been in touch with the owners? Nope. No one has contacted me. Okay, but uh, you properly served. Is yes. it a condo, apartment it's, building? It's um, a house. It's a house. Okay. Is there anybody living in the house? Yes. Okay. Just as a suggestion, you don't have to do it, but if, if you really want compliance, the uh, property record, the uh, state of Florida has uh, Savvy Holdings, S-A-V-V-Y Holdings as the manager of the property, mm -hmm. S-A-V-V-Y Holdings. And the principal of that uh, company is someone by the name of Rafael Gordillo. So if you want to get their attention, I would send them a copy of the order which I am about to impose. No problem. Uh, I mean, the previous owner still lives there. It just, they explained from what one of the tenants that stays within the surrounding explained to me that he had sold the property over and they're still waiting to get paid before they can move, They all can move out. Well, I'm, I'm only suggesting that the um, e that S H O O five LLC um, is owned and managed by yes. those folks. Okay. Still, as of last night, so um, maybe you can get their attention by serving them as well, courtesy uh, 
a copy of whatever what, what whatever the order is. Uh, so I'm asked to the second violation, the uh, vehicle, uh, ba based on the testimony of the city's code compliance officer, the evidence presented uh, that the uh, property is still out of compliance since September 11th. I hereby find in favor of the city, hereby ratify the fines in the amount of $250 accruing since September 11th. The fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there is compliance and authorize, hereby authorize the filing of a lien. Now as for, as for the last case, it's a new case. The roof is falling apart as of the final recheck from the outside. The roof is still falling apart, but I also gained access to one of the the um, people sta staying within the surroundings, and it does not look. Do you have a photograph? Yes. This is how the that's the side that's the east side of the property. This is how it look. Well, looks like an unsafe structure to me. It is. So. Perhaps your building official can go take a look at it. If the roof is about to collapse, I think it's, I don't know that uh, putting a fine on the property is really gonna get it done, but I'll uh, do what I can. Um, as to the third violation, I um, find in favor of the city based on the photographs and the testimony of the city's code compliance officer depicting that the violations exist, proper notice has been given, and a fine in favor of the city. Enter an adjudication and set a compliance date of 30 days. In the event of non-compliance, there shall be a daily fine of $500 until the violation is abated. Southeast District. FLA annual case number CEIVY 2019 Officer Karen Jean Lewis. Ms. Lewis, come right up. Anybody on behalf of the owner? If not, let me hear from the city. Ms. Lewis. Good morning, co compliance officer Karen Jean Lewis. The property 910 Northeast 132 Street was cited to remove the inoperable buses that are on the property with flat tires and either expired or no tags altogether. The complaint was given to me by co-manager Cordo. I did make contact with the pastor of the church, Pastor Fafa, and he advised that the vehicles would be moved and transported to Haiti. Since then, I have not heard from him and the vehicles are still there. The property was posted on August 29th at 10.40 a.m. Do you have photographs? What is the uh, documentation reflecting the church's position that the, 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 the their allegation that the buses are being transported to Haiti? The pastor didn't show me any documented proof. It was just word of mouth when we had a conversation because I was posting the notice to appear and I explained to him why I was there and what he was cited for and that's what he told me. Did he explain how long it'll take to make the arrangements to ship them to Haiti? He said he was gonna work on it, and but he didn't give me a specific time frame. What is your recommendation? Um, I recommend to adjudicate. Yeah, let me, uh, let's give him 30 days. If he has not um, made arrangements or hasn't 
remove the buses from the property, we're going to start finding uh, the church, yeah. although it's reluctant to do so. Um, you know, the code does provide that you can't keep those vehicles on the property. So based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer, the photographs and the evidence presented depicting that the cited violation still exist, that proper notice has been given, I find in favor of the city entering adjudication and set an abatement date of 30 days. In the event of non-compliance, there shall be a daily fine of $100 until the violation is abated. Sylvan and Most Ledger, case number MHVIO 2018-01090, Officer Gary Beswick. Good morning, sir. Please state your full name and address. Sylvan Ledger, 446 Northeast 141st Street. And uh, what is your relationship to the property? Uh, owner, sir. Okay. Do you know why you're here? Yes, it was a uh, lack of permits that was uh, due for kitchen cabinets, but the uh, permits have been applied for as of September 5th, and it's just now pending from the city. Okay. Y you were um, previously adjudicated. You were given until September 11th to um, get the work done to get the permit. Mm -hmm. And um, so let me, let me hear from the city. Good morning, Gary Bezzi from the city of North Miami. Um, as he stated... Um, um, basically, he applied for the permit. It was approved by the building official on the 11th of this month. So it's going through the process. So you can take it for 30 days. Okay. I will accept the recommendation um, from Mr. Beswick. And so uh, we will table your case for 30 days. Uh, please expedite as much as you can. Um, the process. Uh, if you need to speak to the building official, I just saw him back there. He's hiding now, but he's back there. Um, but he can help you uh, get the permit done. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. TNC LLC, case number SDNOV 2019-00064, Officer Aaron Barber. Anybody here on behalf of the owner? If not, let me hear from the officer. Good morning, um, Aaron Barber, City of North Miami Code Compliance. Uh, this case has been um, previously heard, and uh, upon inspection yesterday, I do find that they are in compliance. Uh, permits were pulled, and construction has begun. I do have the, uh, I did take a uh, photo of the permit, and the area, but they are in compliance. Give me the property address again. It's 725 Northeast, 125 Street. Okay. They had a prior adjudication? They did, yes. Okay. And their permits had been held up because of the uh, um, issues with the materials required uh, that are now required for dumpster enclosures. But so they, they are in compliance. They, okay. So is your recommendation to table or dismiss? Dismiss. All right. Case dismissed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The Leeward Condo, case number MHVIO 2018-01349, Officer Gary Beswick. Anybody here on behalf of the Leeward, yes. Leeward Condo at 555 Northeast 123rd Street? If so, please state your full name, yes. your Susan address. Susan Rodriguez okay. is my name. I am president of the association the 555 Northeast 123rd Street. Here in Miami. Do you know why you're here today? Oh, yes. You do? I, know. <laughs> I see the pictures. Um, looks to me like a very nice job, actually, <laughs> but I'm going to ask the city <laughs> to uh, present its case. Good morning, Gary Bezik from the city of North Miami. Um, the association did apply for the permit. The plans were signing back to our office on the 16th with an engineer report for soundproofing. 
So basically, we can go ahead and table it for 30 days while the process go on for the permit. Okay. Uh, is that okay with you? Table it for 30 days? Yeah. And the, uh, what's being done here is uh, uh, obtaining permits for the work that has already been done, which is basically uh, a new floor. Yeah, um, um, they, they basically um, they tile the, all, the always, which required permits and soundproofing. Okay. All Thank right, you. very good. So Thank we're going to table it for 30 days. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. The next customer has three cases, three horizons, East Condo, case number CEFAW 2019-00147, Officer Shanna Sanders. Ms. Sanders, come right up. And I don't see anyone here on behalf of the owner. Um, three Horizons East Condo, 12500 Northeast 15th Avenue. We're going to hear the first case. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, Coal Compliance Officer. This is a new case for property address 12500 Northeast 15th Avenue for a fence that's in disrepair. It was originally cited June 25th, sent a couple of notices I'm showing here july 8th and again on july 20th as of last week wednesday the violation still remains i have photos if you would like to see i have seen the photo of okay. uh, a fence on the side of uh, on uh, on the grass is, is that a broken fence i'm trying to get to the photos of me uh, my apologies um yes it is a fence Yes, the fence, um, it appears that maybe someone had ran into the fence maybe a few, um, maybe about a month or so ago, so they haven't repaired it. They've most so now just removed the rest of the, I guess, slats or iron, I don't know, iron, iron poling or pipes or whatever, and placed them on the side of the, of the fence. Okay, so there, there's a partial, there, there, there's a, a, a space where there is no fence, and then that piece is missing and it's set aside on the side right? that's correct okay my notes say that this was previously adjudicated this was not adjudicated um, previously let me, let's, let's go back be patient with me these new systems it's not on your report but it my notes reflect a prior adjudication but I don't think so um, this is the first time that I'm bringing this case I know we have another one for a um, the yeah. nuisance, but no, this is the Not first time we're hearing okay. this one. So uh, any uh, contact with the property owner? Um, no, I visit this property um, a few times because there's you know, quite a few things going on here, but no, um, I haven't had any contact with the condo association and or anyone um, in reference to this violation. So what do they need to do to comply? Uh, um, fix the fence <laughs> fix or the remove fence. the, uh, the fix, old fence? Fix it in or remove it. We're bringing it to compliance. Of okay. course, if they fix it, um, they may need permits for that. Um, you know, but it's an existing fence since less than a certain percentage, so that I'm sure the building department will instruct them on what they're needed, but um, fix or remove. Okay. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer, the photographs and evidence presented depicting that the cited violation still exists, Proper notice has been given. I find in favor of the city, enter an adjudication, and set a compliance date of 30 days. In the event of noncompliance, there shall be a daily fine of $250 until the violation is abated. Next case, same property. Wasn't this previously? Uh, I, I, it wasn't previously. Not, not according to the progress report that I read. Um, I have it marked down as. Yeah, me too, but it's not. Okay. That is that correct? Can can you state for the record that this was not previously? I mean, I can look on the computer. Um, it was set for a hearing, but then I think it was canceled um, due to the storms or hurricane or something, um, or either it was some type of something for one reason or another. It was canceled, so it was just rescheduled. But it was never um, heard, presented, in or adjudicated. Okay. All right. Next one. I believe the next one was. The next one was heard in yes. reference to the nuisance of the settling water. Three Horizons East Condo, case number CENUS 2019-00187, Officer Shanna Sanders. 
Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami Code Compliance Officer. This is a report of um, previous compliance. This is the, a case for um, a nuisance violation for selling water that's um, is selling outside of a unit. Um, the the occupied unit has complained several times. They have had a contractor come out there. They can't seem to find out where the water is coming from, but there is selling water. Um, again, this has already been heard as of last Wednesday. Water still remains. No reports or anything have been submitted to me from the condo association or, in, or anyone from this um, building showing where and why the water is coming from. Um, so um, again, the, the unit by this selling water is very bothered because it's, it's starting to get fish in the un in, in the selling water. It's dirty, it's starting to get mosquitoes. It was mosquitoes and a couple of frogs the time that I went there. But again, it's selling water as you see here in the pictures depicted some type of um, I don't see the I don't see any settling water on the pictures that you're showing me. Okay. Where's um, the water? I'm, I mean, I, I'm showing <laughs> water here. Um, this little black hole here that you this is yeah. water. All of this is is is, is water that's settling um, right outside this window. Uh, as you see here, um, it's small fish. I see a dark spot with wires. All of that is water. It's it, it, it's, it's that's settled water. That dog spot is all water. Okay. I was looking for like a puddle. That's a puddle? It is yeah. a recent photo. It is, um, it is a small puddle, yes. The third picture under recent photos is a good. Okay, let's go out. Uh, recent photos. You could see it better in the third photo. It's a, there you go. That's a good these one. Are, these are the ones that were taken um, last week. Uh, you know, um, this is That's close up, <laughs> you okay. know, try to get as close as possible as I can. Okay, this, um, yeah, yeah, let me find that one. Yeah, this is, this is, this, this is what it's looking like um, on any given day with, with or without any um, rain. Where's the water coming from? And that's what um, the unit owner near this um, selling water is um, is questioning. I've contacted the condo association to see if, you know, maybe they can have someone come out there. The unit owner has hired someone to come out there, a plumber. But again, they're not seeing. There's no pipes or plumbing or anything, as you see in the picture. It's some type of electrical box there or cable box. But other than that, nothing that would show where the water is coming from but you know because it's, it's mosquitoes and frogs they definitely want to get this um this rectified but again um i don't know and they don't know <coughs> but because it's you know on the outside area of the property um i, I cited the condo association since them um, again it's the outside common area. What's the uh, box with the wires next to the puddle? Um, I'm no electrician, I know my father is, but I mean, seeing some, I don't know, seems like maybe some type of cable box. I don't even think that's an electrical box. It seems as though it's maybe a cable box of some sort. I, uh, um, and so I you, you've made contact with the association? I have tried to make contact with the association on the last hearing. Someone from the association came. He's the one who asked for, I believe it was a three or maybe four month extension. I would look back at my docket to see what was stated, but he asked for a three month extension. Um, that was the last time I've heard from them at the last hearing. Um, other than that, no. Okay. Your recommendation is to ratify? Um, yes, let's go ahead and ratify the fine. Um, okay. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer, the photographs and the evidence presented, that the property is still out of compliance uh, since September 11th, I find in favor of the city hereby ratify the fines accrued to date in the amount of $250, assess cost in favor of the city, authorize the filing of a lien, the fine shall continue to run on a daily basis until there is full compliance. You have a third case, the same property? Well, no, that but it is the third case, but that's for Gary Beswick. Okay. Mr. Beswick, same property. 
Three Horizons North mm -hmm. Condo, Inc., Maine. Case number MHVIO 2018-01207, Officer Gary Bezos. Actually, it's a different address, same yeah. condo, right? Yeah, this one is not separate. Okay, this one is the association. I see someone coming up. Please state your full name and address for the record. Good morning. My name is Joanna Martinez. The address is 1470 Northeast 125th Terrace. I'm the property manager. And the property manager for? For Three Horizons North Condo Association. Okay. Um, Which is a separate uh, association than the first right. one. Y your last name again, I'm sorry? Martinez. Martinez, okay. Okay. Um, I show that the president is uh, someone by the name of Dayinel Nevarez. Nevarez, yes. Ne Nevarez. Yes. Uh, president? She's the president, Okay. Correct. Um, this is a permit issue regarding a 40-ton central AC unit. Um, I'm going to hear from the city. Good morning, Gary Bezik for the city of North Miami. This case I prepared to be in heard. Abatement date was September 11th. As of this morning, they haven't up applied for, not even applied for the permit as of yet. So my recommendation is to let the fine move forward. Um, what are they supposed to do? Obtain a mechanical permit for the central AC unit that was installed without a permit. Okay, so uh, you have a picture of the unit? Mm. No, the picture is not there. The complaint came from our mechanical inspector. You went there for inspect a different unit, and then you observe it. All right, so there's a 40-ton central AC. That's a pretty big unit. Uh, was it installed outside the property? No, I think it's probably on top of the roof. On top of the roof, okay. Uh, do we know if it was done by a licensed electrical or plumbing contractor? I don't know who it was done by, but it, it, the complaint, as again, came from our mechanical inspector. That's from the mechanical inspector? From our. You, uh, our, this, meaning the city? City, correct. Okay. Um, all right, let I me I can let address me certain of those. Yeah, of those let, me, let me know uh, what's going on with that AC unit. Yes, so we've uh, contracted... Uh, a contractor, a GC, to address the issues. We were having funding problems, so we just got approved for the loan last week. So we are going to be filing for the permits um, within the next couple of weeks or so, so if we can have an extension. Who who installed the unit? It was done with the pre previous management, previous uh, president. I don't know the contractor who did that installation. I do know that historically they did try to reach out to them, but they, I think they closed the company, so it's it was in our view. Okay. Um, so this was, it, it, it's not on my notes, but uh, Mr. Beswick, you say that this was uh, uh, adjudicated previously and there was an abatement date of For September, September 11th. 11th? Yes. Okay, so what is your recommendation? My recommendation is for the file, is for the file to move forward. Okay. Um, but this has oh. been going on since May. Okay. I. Yes. Uh, I understand. Um, I'm the new property manager, so now we've actually been able to get this project moving. Like I said, we were having funding issues. We passed the special assessment, and we were approved for the loan as of last week. So we now have the funds to properly get the project moving forward. So what, we've been di dil digitally working digitally. on it. Okay, so um, you know what you have to do. Yes. So I, because of the delay, and because of the seriousness of the violation, I'm going to adjudicate the fine, but uh, the quicker you move, the uh, better position you will be in to try to mitigate the lien through the city uh, finance department. Because you need to ratify Absolutely. the fine, correct? I'm gonna ratify right. the fine. Yeah, I'm gonna ratify the fine because of how long it's taken, but there's still the ability for you to come to the city if you move quickly to mm -hmm. get a permit, you may be able to mitigate the fine that I'm being that, that, that I'm going to impose because mm -hmm. I'm required based on the evidence that I hear to act accordingly. So uh, because you were given an abatement date of September 11th, 
to comply and you have not complied, I am duty bound to uh, ratify that fine uh, and to um, also um, put a lien on the property to the extent that you have mitigating issues and um, you may come to the city and, 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 and meet with a proper city personnel, finance or city manager, mm -hmm. try to get those fines mitigated. But I'm going to uh, find that based on the testimony of the city's code compliance officer and the evidence presented that the property has uh, been out of compliance since September 11th, which was the abatement date, I find in favor of the city and I hereby ratify the fines accrued to date in the amount of $250. Uh, the fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there's compliance, assess cost in favor of the city, and authorize the placement of a lien. So okay. that's, uh, you, you, you need to get your folks to uh, move okay. on that loan and get the permit issued. All right, thank you. U.S. Bank Trust TRS, case number CEEXP 2019-00131, Officer Karen Jean Lewis. These are three cases. Property owners, U.S. Bank Trust trustee, 695 Northeast 135th Street. I see no appearances on behalf of the bank, so I'm going to hear from the city. Good morning, co-compliance officer Karen Jean Lewis. The property was cited back on June 11, 2019. Contact was made with the property manager, Tannis Stoops, and I have a copy of the email here um, stating that they're requesting that the vendor go out to, comp to do an estimation, estimation on the repairs and to address the additional items because they're cited for not only for painting but the roof and to bring the structure to take the necessary actions to bring the structure back into compliance because it was deemed by the previous building <coughs> official that it was um, an unfit structure. Unsafe structure, Unsuc but wait, unsafe let's structure. deal with the paint first. First case. As of the final reinspection, the property remains. It hasn't been painted. No permits have been pulled. The notice to appear was posted on August 26th at 2.32 p.m. Okay. Um, in my experience, these cases where banks take over a piece of property, unless you notify somebody high in the organization, uh, you're not going to get compliance. Um, usually these people are in another state and they don't really have time or interest in managing or responding to these kind of issues. Um, I'm going to adjudicate the fine, but I would suggest that you send the order to a high official of uh, U.S. Bank. It's a national organization. Mm -hmm. Wherever they are, their registered agent, the president, whoever. Um, so as to 00131, I am going to uh, find that based on the testimony of the code compliance officer, the evidence presented, the property has been out of compliance since September 11th, 2019. I find in favor of the city, hereby ratify the fines accrued to date uh, in the amount of $500. Says costs in favor of the city, uh, and the fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there is compliance. I authorize the filing of a lien against the property. Uh, and the next case involves the same owner, the same property. This has to do with building issues. U.S. Bank Trust TRS, case number CESUH 2019-00001, Officer Karen Jean Lewis. This property was originally cited June 11, 2019. And originally cited? Mm -hmm. June 11, 2019. Okay, got yes. it. And the violation was for the property to be put back into compliance. The previous building official deemed the structure unsafe. And as of the final reinspection, there's been no change, no permits on file. The notice to appear was posted on August 26, 
2019 at 2.32 p.m. The building official has deemed this property a, uh, an unsafe structure? The previous building official, Ron Jackson, those were the notes on file for this property. Okay. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the city's code compliance officer and the evidence presented that the property has been out of compliance since September 11th, 2019, I find in favor of the city hereby ratify the fines accrued to date in the amount of $500 per day, assess costs, set the fines, um, the, the, the fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there is compliance. I, I authorize the uh, placement of a lien and deem the property an unsafe structure. U.S. Bank Trust TRS, case number CEWWC 2019-00063, Officer Karen Jean Lewis. The property was originally cited June 11, 2019, in reference to the roof that has a blue tarp. And per my email communication with Tennis Stoops, they were supposed to be sending a vendor out to do an estimation on the roof repairs so that they can begin the work. There's still no permit on file and the roof still has a blue tarp. Notice to appear was posted on August 26, 2019 at 2.32 p.m. The violation remains. Again, I repeat the same comments yep. when it comes to a bank that forecloses on property sending a vendor to figure out what it's going to cost them to fix the roof is not an acceptable answer and so um, you, you need to go higher than whoever you're dealing with based on the testimony of the city's code compliance officer the photographs and the evidence presented that the property has been out of compliance since september 11 2019 i find in favor of the city hereby ratify the fines accrued to date in the amount of 500 dollars per day assess costs the fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there's compliance, and I hereby uh, authorize the filing of a lien, and to the extent the property is an unsafe structure, um, authorize the building official to take whatever action is necessary before the Board of Rules and Appeals to uh, take the necessary action to either demolish or do whatever they need to do. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Venice Park Gardens, case number MHVIO 2018-01330, Officer Gary Beswick. Anybody here on behalf of the owner? If not, let me hear from Mr. Beswick on behalf of the city. By the way, I don't think w there's anybody here that will need an interpreter, so the interpreters are free to go. Does anybody, anybody, uh, anybody here needs an interpreter? No. Okay, so let's proceed. Thank you. He needs to speak to his code officer. I don't know who that might be, but we'll help him later. All right. So we're going to let the interpreter leave. Okay. Mr. Mr. Beswick. Good morning, Gary Beswick for the city of North Miami. Um, as of this morning, I'm going to show you a printout of the issue of the property. There's no permit that I've been applied for or obtained for the violation. And the abatement date was September 11th, 2019. What is the uh, work that was done? It was interior alteration and renovation with, without permit. Okay. I have a printout of the, of the property. Do you have a photograph? Uh, 
I have a photograph, but it's not attached to this new system. But I do have a photograph. I observe them doing the work when I open a violation. All right, even though it's not in the system, let me take a look at the photograph. No, I don't have it with me. Oh, you don't have it no. with you. Okay, but uh, your testimony is that, the, that you saw work inside interior renovations Correct. inside the property that required the issuance of a building permit. Correct. Okay. And as of this morning, there's none. And you have contacted the property owner? Well, they was here, they was here the last year. Okay, so um, they were here. When it was adjudicated. It was adjudicated, and you won a ratification. Yes. Okay. Based on the testimony of the city's code compliance officer and other ev evidence presented that the property has been out of compliance since September 11th, 2019, I hereby find in favor of the city. Ratify the fines accrued to date in the amount of uh, $250 per day and assess costs in favor of the city. The set fines shall continue to run on a daily basis until there is compliance, and I authorize the filing of a lien against the property. Thank you. Any other cases? There are no more cases on, in on the In which case, any, anything else from the city? If not, we're adjourned. <laughs>